Hey guys, my name is Brady Boo, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be presenting Pokey Park Wii Pikachu's Adventure with my co-commentators. They want to introduce themselves. I'll go first. Uh, my name is Glenjamin. I'm a mod for Pokey Park. It's nice to meet you all. And, and... Oh, yeah, go. Okay, uh, and I'm <laughs> Phantom. I have run this game enough. <laughs> And watch Brady Brady grind world record in this. All right, so we'll, we're gonna start off with this is the picture. It's my favorite one. It's basic, um, and we are gonna change the tech speed to fast. This saves at least like eight minutes. Rumble off because it's annoying. And we'll start in three, two, one, go. So Pokey Park is probably like the one of the first like free roaming games and it's on the Wii and the graphics are like phenomenal if you compare it to newer generation games. But the story though, <laughs> um, so the story starts off with Mew guiding these four friends into a hole. Now I don't know why this hole appears, can't tell you why, but basically Mew is going to destroy the world. And Mew wants Pikachu to save it. Now, I don't know why Mew would destroy his own plans here, because he's destroying the world and Pikachu's trying to save it. But either way, Pikachu is separated from his three friends and he's trying to find them. And the point of Poke Park is to play as many, many, game, many games as possible while friending lots of friends this unlocks many things upgrades berries basically you beat the game with friendship as it should be honestly uh gotta love in the cutscene uh is basically just the mystery dungeon hole it keeps giving the colors it's very nice a little cute nod uh, Brady's actually spamming 1 and 2 on his Wiimote, which is the only controller that you can really use to play this game, uh, for t fast text. Uh, so he's spamming 1 and 2 repeatedly to get as fast a text box as, as possible. Um, other than that, he's going to be getting his first friend. This is what we call the tutorial. Uh, it's just going to teach you the basics. How to run, how to jump, congrats. And then, sooner than, rather than later, we're going to be getting into our first skill game. Uh, which there are, I believe, four different types? Yeah, four. So, you have... Yeah, go for it. Oh! That's pretty good. Oh! That. Red berry? Red berry, nice. Yeah, stop looking at screens. Just looking at that. Well, normally, I would actually never get the berry in runs. But the red berry, it's pretty much a safety. You're not gonna mess anything up. You're not gonna mess up the route like at all. So that's kind of why I got it there. Um, if I would have gone a gold berry, which I would say it's like a good one in like a hundred chance, um, I can save a good eight seconds later in the meadow zone. Here I'm gonna chase Chadot, and the weird thing about Chadot is it's completely RNG based whether you save one and a half seconds or you lose it. He can go left or right and he went left and now I save one and a half seconds. Really that simple? Really? Yeah. Um, and there's no, no things to do here to nip it at all. But that's kind of the fun of it. This game is very rock solid. For, for, for a very, like, different Wii game. I mean, in terms of Wii games, it's quite nice because it is a mini game collectathon. But in terms of from Pokemon, this is one of the like sturdiest games. It's very hard to find anything that you can really use to save time. So the uh, the route is optimizing a lot of just good movement, and your routing is going to be very important. The only thing that really causes a difference is. Pokemon spawns in the game, which are stagnant in the tutorial, but you'll see could be better or could be worse when we get into Meadow Zone and the remaining zones. Right here, I'm just waking some mics up. Thunderbolt, that'll do. 
quite rude though. Performance. Um, okay. This is probably the only part of the game too where there was even some amount of breaking happening and we still couldn't really crack at what was happening. This game has pretty much zero to no, no glitches and it's pretty surprising because it's the Wii game. But that's how rock steady this game is. Now, opening up here, we're just going to open up our Poke Pad for the first time and probably the only time until way, way later. That chat talk just wants you to open the pause menu real quick and close it. That's about it. If you don't do it, he'll keep going and then just stop you and tell you to open it again. It's really annoying. Be careful not to mash one. Basically. Perfect. Be the hardest part of the game. Exactly. Uh, now we are about to enter the meadow zone. And there's going to be a little bit of a cutscene here for the meadow zone. But essentially, you see these signs right here. This helps you play the game. Not that you really need help, because, you know, you have one and two. <laughs> yeah, one, two. The B button will center your camera behind Pikachu, and the A button is for Thunderbolt. And that covers every button on the controller. Maybe yeah, you didn't cover the most important part of the Wiimote. The shaking. True. Oh, <laughs> we will get there very shortly. Yes. So, pretty much Glenn explained it, but the main part of time saving in this run is having really good lines. It's almost like a Mario game in that way, where you have to stay in the same exact spot and have really good lines. And you have to keep in mind, this is a D-pad. Uh, so it's really think of it difficult like, to get. Yeah, uh, think of it like a Resident Evil controls. This is basically the Resident Evil Pokemon, not gonna lie. As you can see. Yeah. Dante's about to peer out of nowhere. Featuring Pikachu does Dante's drive like a tank. <laughs> so right here, Bulbasaur is saying we can't play the attraction, but randomly he just says you can. Don't know why. He was feeling a little generous. Uh, he was feeling bad. The poor man hasn't had an attraction due to the zone leader not liking this stuff so in the end he's just like i just want to see people play i want to play this is the first attraction out of 12 in the game one of the more fun ones more competitive on the ils <laughs> how you do um, it <laughs> it's all good how do you do it you just shake this one gets yeah, yeah. it's it's the simplest one. Uh, you just so, shake. Why it's the tutorial traction? Yeah, so Brady does try and time his first shake with the countdown to get a little speed boost at the start. Good, like 0. 0.3 seconds. But now that we yeah. we've had that, uh, our good friend Chikorita here, you know, we built up such a friendship, uh, is gonna get kidnapped uh, by two henchmen of the mafia. <laughs> Basically, you'll see right here. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Bad luck, Chikorita. As you can Why see, yeah. As you can see, Mankey and Trico are quite pissed. Uh, so they will be taking them. And now we got our retrieve Chikorita. Mhm. Mm and now Bunnyary is crying. You know, Bunnyary has zero attack. Ah. Attach attachment, jeez, to Chikorita at all. We're supposedly lifelong friends with three Pokemon that also isekai themselves into the hole. We're supposed to be good friends with Piplup, Charmander, and Chikorita. Uh, yep. sa sadly, no like Gen 3 love out of that pick, but a bit odd. We couldn't and have Mudkip. That we can't cross the bridge, so we just don't. We just listen to him. Yeah, Trico will only let you cross the bridge if the slowest Pokemon, Turtwig, can dash through Bulbasaur's minigame. You should have made it a bit harder, should have said Caterpie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, unfortunately you can't even get Caterpie yet. Yeah, it's trapped. So here we fed Munchlax a red berry. 
and that actually gives us 50 berries in return, which is a, actually an insane amount early in the game. That's one of the main reasons we get Munchlax, but also he's pretty fast. He's one of the fastest to get. But Brady, why do we need berries? Because we need to go fast. We can get upgrades along the way. Oh, okay. Um, we can get upgrades along the way. Faster and, Yep. And upgrades cost berries. And that's pretty much the explanation. The upgrades give you speed, and if you're fa going faster, well, you'll go faster and run. You, you get the point. The only yeah. thing we do upgrade in this game is speed. Now, if you play this casually, you may get an iron tail, you may upgrade your thunderbolt, but in the speed run, it doesn't really affect anything at all. Yeah, we'll be buying two speed upgrades. Uh, you could do three, but we have another upgrade that kind of makes up for not having the third dash upgrade. Okay, not a bad line here. And after this, we want to get Bunyary, but we'll talk about the spawns right after uh, Pachirisu gets hit here. Basically, take Pachirisu's lunch money here. So, because this fade out right here respawns every Pokemon. So, Bunyary could have been in front of me and is now completely in a different spot. And Bunyary is all the way over here. That's pretty much the spawns of the game, so you can't prepare ahead what your route is going to be. You have to think on your feet, you have to like move your camera all over the place and find which Pokemon you want to get next. This is an okay line. Pretty good. Yeah. Now we are going back to Bulbasaur and rematching with Turtwig. And probably going to lose because Trico said Turtwig's the slowest. True. Well, good thing, because you don't really need to hit the goal anymore. The goal now is called the bonus. You get, I believe it's 75 berries in Bulbasaur. If you get the bonus with a specific Pokemon, uh, for now, it is actually going to be with Turtwig. And Turtwig, I believe, is 10 seconds, which is quite generous for speedrunners. Yeah, the, the fact that this minigame is a race is pretty irrelevant. You yeah. just have to go as fast as your Pokemon can go. Well, Bunyary in itself is not really a fast Pokemon, but Bunyary spawns two of the most fastest Pokemon you can get in the absolute run. Really an important Pokemon to the whole run. When I was building this route, I kind of built it around Bun Bunyary because you needed Bunyary in the run, and I'm like, well, now I kind of have to get patch. <laughs> oh, I didn't get the boost again. It's pretty hard to time, for me at least. Um, but basically, after you shake it, you don't have to shake that fast anymore. And here... One of the easiest mistakes to make, and I just made it. <laughs> oh, well, the, the easiest mistake to make is play again but <laughs> yes and i have definitely done that in runs i, oh, I definitely did that in my first like four yeah same. easy way to lose 20 seconds i definitely used to do that in bingo <laughs> okay low tad's not in a good spot i'll explain that later but we can basically drown low tad yeah we're yeah, gonna the water type try and though. trying to wait for some good spots for low tad until we can't anymore and more more often than not, Lotad is in a good spot. If he's not in a good spot, it's more of a kind of a slap to the face. But here, Mankey, we're gonna do a little bit of a nip here. One of the only nip you can do in the game. You can uh, manipulate him into the corner, and we can drown him. Are you gonna do right side? I'm gonna do, do left. Bye bye. Yep, easy as that. Now, yeah, so if easy. you knock any Pokemon into the water, it is an insta-win. Some Pokemon like to just do it themselves, we love that. Uh, but it's the reason why we're trying to set up Lotad for that. Uh, here's the one time buffering one works. Uh, <laughs> you, can buffer, you can buffer inputs in this game through cutscenes, it's kind of cool, but we're just like, wow. Yeah, it's really only useful in straight lines, and this is the yeah. best instance of that. Uh, oh, and we get the best skill game, Hide and Seek. Let's we pray get for fast Oddish. <laughs> Do we get a good Oddish spawn? Can you find him? Uh, unfortunate. Ah, shoot. 
Uh, so yeah, he has a I chance of... Has... Oh, what was that? Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, Oddish has a chance of spawning directly behind you, so you can see him at the very start. Oh, that's uh, that one wasn't too bad. Yeah, there are some rather horrid, like, hide-and-seek games. Like, Bonsley, if you saw him in the early part of Meadow Zone, his hide-and-seek game is kind of annoying. Uh, and a lot of the later ones, but we will be picking a couple, I think... Yeah, Brady's Route definitely has Psyduck, so... Yeah, yeah, we, are, we, we are definitely doing another hide-and-seek coming up. So hide-and-seek has three spots, and it's consistent throughout the whole cast. Um, and what, what else is consistent? There's one amazing spot which saves an incredible amount of time, like an absolute insane amount of time. And the other spots save barely any time at all, or you lose time. So it's kind of the gamble you want to take with this game. Do you do Mudkip again? Uh, no, Mudkip's a backup Pokemon. Yeah. yeah, Mudkip is a backup in the case of very bad beat zone. Which is unusual in this game. <laughs> beat zone is the worst. <laughs> What keeps a backup for the big birds? Well, here's the zone keeper. This guy has another one of our prism shards used to stop the apocalypse. So, as usual, instead of just giving it to us, we must beat his mini game. But again, we have a little fetch quest before we can beat his mini game. We have to beat up both. His henchmen. <laughs> both. Cro uh, is it Krogunk and Spiro? Yep. Yeah. We usually try and beat up one more on the way that they're associated with, but we don't really care. We'll see if we can get Trico now and see if we have to reset the run. Why is Trico not a henchman? The poor guy. Well, we already kind of solved his issue. Yeah, but you didn't I, beat him up. I think the line here is Crow Gunk and Spear are ahead of Trico and Mankey. I think these two are in charge oh, of him. The hen the, we have the goons and then the henchmen. <laughs> and this Meadow Zone Mafia. And then Venusaur's the Dawn. So here, normally I'd be looking for a better otter spawn. And actually the spawn I got before wasn't that great. I just decided to get it because I wanted to show off Hide and Seek right away. And here I'm going to scan and look for a low tat spawn. See if he's good close to the water. And no, he's not. I'm going to have to see it on the way back. And if not, I'm going to have to get him on another trip from Beach Zone, which is like a good 25 minutes later. This is one of like two obstacle hops we do in the game. Very hard, you press the two button and hold forward. You don't want to say that, because you will fall into the pit. <laughs> this is, that is just how this world works. If you say it's easy, you will fall. And he's done it. Best Truly a parkour, parkour warrior. So Trico is one of the most infamous Pokemon on the run, because a strategy I used to do is reset for a very specific RNG heavy spot, and I didn't get it here, and I didn't really get a low tad either, that's not really it either. Uh, I really want to show off low tad, but the same idea for low tad applies to Mankey. Um, you bait him towards the water, actually he kind of goes there on his own, and you just hit him in the water. But Trico is infamous because he can run into you like Trico did or what Turtwig did earlier, right? When Turtwig just kind of his line went right into me and I hit him immediately. That barely happens, by the way. That was really lucky. Um, Trico can do the same and it barely happens. But I used to reset for it because it saved. It was the fastest Pokemon you can get in the route. You saved like a good eight seconds, but I stopped resetting for it because obviously, you know, it's not. Great to reset a run 25 minutes in just for one Pokemon. Copium. Here, um, Venusaur's only gonna let Chikorita free if we beat Vine Swing, which is the next minigame coming up. We need to pay him five berries to beat it. He's very demanding. <laughs> and we use Mankey for this. Mankey. There's really no reason why we use Mankey. We can honestly use Pikachu or Pachirisu, but Mankey is really easy to use. It's a really easy and consistent method. And I've done it. 
Another cool thing Venusaur does here is Venusaur, right, he walked up to where you landed. If he walks backwards, you actually know you missed the bonus. If he walks forward, then you know you actually landed the bonus. It's a cool little nitbit you did, really don't know unless you, like, 100% the game, because that's when you're playing these attractions, like, 20 times in a row. Yeah, now, Venusaur's gonna give us a, a little bit of, what is it, the crystal? But he's also not gonna be our friend. So Venusaur won't count as a friend for the sake of any percent. Because In... guess what? He wants more stuff. This demanding and thing. He wants you to squash the beef between three Pokemon that he's already started the beef with. Venusaur, Empoleon, and Blaziken in this game are all in a little bit of a turf war uh and basically he wants you to only befriend empoleon because he doesn't care about blaziken for some reason we only found that out through bingo though right now we're about to leave meadow zone we're pretty much done here um i do have to come back for low tide eventually and one other thing yeah, um, but there's yeah. other friends that we get later here. Um, in exiting the meadow zone, uh, you actually go into the meeting place. It's kind of like the hub world here. Um, before I say that, if you looked upwards, you saw Dialga and Palkia, even though they have no relevance in this game at all. I kind of wish they did. Um, really cool statue, like actually a really amazing statue to look at in the game. You can go under the waterfall even, kind of a little nitbit. Of the waterfall action there. Starly was teaching us about the camera, even though you probably would have figured it out by then. We've been doing it for 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Be a little weird to not have moved the camera yet, but. <laughs> a thing I do in this game is while I'm dashing, I spam the camera button. So while spamming the camera button while dashing, you actually take your corners way tighter. So around when I was turning around Mankey Bridge, right, the bridge where we attacked Mankey, uh, when I was turning around the corner, I spammed the B button and I saved a good second there because I turned around it tightly. And if you didn't spam it there, well, you probably would have hit the wall and you would have been stuck at the wall. So it's a pretty useful technique for something like, say, uh, a spiral staircase. Three house. <laughs> <laughs> but you won't see that for another two hours. <laughs> I actually go back to it two times. The great thing about this um, game is once you save a friend, they get written off. We don't care. Chikorita is now going to be taken up into infrastructure. Uh, they're really fond about just building just a big old house for everybody. Uh, and here I can completely end the run if I want. Let's see, am I going to travel to Metal Zone? Am I feeling it today? Uh, no, I'm not feeling it. Yeah, very careful not to match two there, because you will just lose the berries that you very much need. Here we are taught how to use pictures. It's actually kind of a cool part of the game that is completely useless to the speedrun. But I kind of wish it was. In Poke Park 2, they actually have you take a picture of Pelipper, and that's how you friend it. Really interesting way they added it into the game. But here it's more of just a memorabilia of a thing to do here. Take a picture, and that's the only time I'm doing it in the whole game. Like, it's good thumbnail material, but then they put their whole lettering at the bottom. Like, I don't care that it's copyrighted by Pokemon. What is it? Copyrighted? I took the photo. I did all the work. Here Another we have... Spot. Completely end the run. Electabuzz can give you a Thunderbolt upgrade. Increase the distance of Thunderbolt, not the damage. If I press yes here, I completely end the run. Lose all 350 berries. I'm getting into here. But alongside in the future, there will be another like three goons added to this collection. And we can add more upgrades. Yeah, the, the berry routing is actually very tight. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room for error in this route. So we very much need the berries that we have. That's why the red berry at the beginning was so nice, because now you yeah. don't, you have so much leeway. Because again, we're getting two upgrades of dash. 
uh, and then a separate upgrade that's actually just available by friending a certain Pokemon. Here so, is Beach Zone. The most sounds so, sounds so sad about it. This is Beach Zone. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, we are looking for like nine friends here. So and all of them can be in completely random spots. Now look how big this area is, right? They can pretty much be anywhere no. for the most part. Uh, in particular, we need Psyduck. No. Ideally, immediately. I think the Very hardest ideal. one to get is the birds, to be honest. The birds yeah. kind of just yeah. be around, and they stay in the air. You cannot friend birds in the air because they don't care. No. So uh, you gotta wait for them to fall down, so chasing them is just time. And you gotta get a good spot for them too, so they dive bomb in the water. And we actually got a pretty good okay. spawn for Psyduck. Pretty decent. Oh, see, yeah, that's not bad at all. What we see this funny guy do? I think Psyduck actually has four hide and seek spots. I think that's he. Psyduck's he like the only one. Yep. Um, okay. Am I gonna get get the really funny spawn? Now, where is he? Oh, oh no. Oh, no. But where is he? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Oh, there he is. Honestly, that, that's, his, that's his best hiding spot. He can hide right behind you. You can hide right behind you, right in front of you, and just to your left. Like, Psyduck is literally tickling your tail right now behind you. That's that's how close he is. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Nothing in particular, but that's fine. We don't really need anyone else besides Psyduck at the beginning. Yep, the, the Psyduck spawn... Is important because it gives us Golduck, which we'll need to do the attraction for this area. Here's one of like five quizzes. Of course, I was guarding the, the bridge right here was the thing to make friends. I want to talk to them. Tackle them is kind of true too, though. Lightning Bolt. I was pretty sure it was Moon. Three hairs. One of the trickier parts of this run, you may not realize it, but you have to remember like 12 questions from like five different Pokemon. That's a lot of different questions to remember. And you know, a lot of them are really easy. They're self-explanatory, but at the heat of the moment, you kind of get nervous and then you answer the wrong question and oh, you lose 20 seconds. Oh, this is pretty good. Oh yeah. So Golduck just completely ran into me. Saved a good two seconds there, just randomly for no reason. I'll take it though. Golduck. I wasn't able to hit Golduck in the water because sometimes Golduck can be close to the water, but I was going to take this spawn either way because it was just in my line. Look at that Vaporeon in the background. Ah, I'm not oh. going to take that. Oh, oh. that. That's interesting. Uh, that Staravia is not a great spot. Yeah, he, Staravia might run into the bridge and then I just screw myself there. True. Yeah. Uh, I ideally, we get the bird. Head. Ideally, we get the birds next to the water. I was just thinking, yeah. if you go if you go right, that man curves. That man does a full 90 underneath the bridge. And then curves <laughs> right upwards, too. Oh Here, my goodness, it's our friend. Somehow got across the water. I have no idea how. No, I mean, why not? does have a little tiny tail, though. Um, my head cannons that for alligator tossed him. We have to find Bidoof in the meadow zone, actually. We have to go all the way back to the meadow zone to find Bidoof who can create bridges. That's the th reason why we go back to meadow zone. Also, a little tattoo as well. Here, I'm going to get Azrael. Great spawn. Yep. Azrael spawns in Totodile, which is very fast. That's the main reason why we get Azrael. I see there's there's kind of a common pattern with getting Pokemon. A lot of Pokemon spawn in faster Pokemon. Psyduck was one of them. And would you get Slowpoke here? Uh, yeah, it's it's going to change, though. Yeah, yeah, but yep. if it's still, like, around there. Yeah, I, I would get Slowpoke. You have, like, three options here. You have Slowpoke, Taylor, or Wingle, and Mudkip later on if you really want. Um, and they can be substitutions for other Pokemon you can't get, and those Pokemon are the Big Birds, which is Saravia and Pidgeotto, the two fastest Pokemon you can get in the Beach Zone. Kind of the main reason why you reset in this run is because you want those two Pokemon. They save at least 10 seconds each. You lose 
20 seconds in your beach zone if you don't get them. It's kind of the reason why you reset. And that's also why we have so many substitutions as well. I didn't accidentally go to a meeting. Yeah, I was actually about to go there. I was thinking about what I was doing. Also, the great part about this, they let you skip this cutscene next time you use it. Yep. Once you've done only it once, you don't gotta do it. Only the first time. Yeah. See you, Lotad here. Are you kidding me? Wow. Oh, and Starly ran away from me. I was about to get Starly here. Fortunate. Oh, uh, we get a couple side Pokemon here as well. We yeah, we'll Chimchar. be looking for. Yeah, Chimchar and Shinx. And occasionally B Barrel. If B Barrel is in our way, which most of the time not. Um, and B Barrel can also be knocked in the water if we get a specific spawn. Most of the time, though, I usually get a Wingle or a Taylo to replace B Barrel because the B Barrel is just not the fastest. B Barrel is only really important if B Barrel is in our way. Sorry, B Barrel. Sorry. We do have the best Pokemon building uh, their Airbnb. Uh, so Their entire family. Yes. And their Situ friends. Situational housing. And all it takes is about four pieces of wood and a bunch of string. Okay, that's a nice Chimchar. Gropius here. Very infamous. You knock into him, Pikachu is stunned for six seconds. I literally have to go out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, the, the big boys, these heavy guys, if you bunk into them, it's like a brick wall. You get a mild concussion, and you just gotta wait as he holds his head. Yeah, Brady avoid- Brady went straight for Chimchar instead of bringing the wood to uh, Bidoof, because Chimchar can be hard to find sometimes. Just randomly, nowhere to be found. Well, Brady's going for the three-peat. He's going for Chimchar, Starly, Shanks, and Aurora before doing the wood. Yeah, I I I don't disagree with that. Star was nice. right there. That was Tail a good one. Fine. Starly, you can just jump up in the air and hit. Uh, Pikachu has a tail hitbox on his tail when you jump, actually, and you don't use it too many times. But when you do use it, it's very useful. And then bullying Starly immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Best part about this game is you can just. Run over Pokemon for no reason. You knock down Caterpie, Caterpie in your way. Oh, send them five feet. That's how you do it. We're gonna steal Shinx's lunch money here. Not that Shinx has much money on us on him anyway. Most Meadow Zone and like no, I would ordinary Pokemon in the beginning game only give you ten berries. Uh, as you get farther down to like haunted, it gets to like twenty. Quite possibly like 40. Yeah, R really, this is just convenient timing because we have to come here for Bidoof anyway. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna add just a little bit of lumber to expand our Airbnb. We have to give about like four pieces of lumber. It's a bit of. And normally I get Pokemon along the way, but I was actually able to just get everyone right off the bat, which was really very nice. If you no, like I to think, think, yeah. Is it the grandma or is it the brother? Uh, uh, the second one's the cousins. Yeah. It goes sister, cousins, yeah, brother, oh, friend, and then yep. grandma. No, you like these. To... Oh, no. Okay. Alright, so, if you like to think about it, like, in this game, there's like a set spawn point for circles. Like, if you think about it like a circle where in that circle any Pokemon can spawn, uh, breaking down the beach zone, the circle for that is gigantic. Like, everyone's starting point is spread out, and the fact that it's a big opening area where it's literally uh, a split path where anyone can spawn, it makes uh, finding Pokemon really, really difficult. Uh, in stuff like the Meadow Zone or even Haunted, you could see that, you know, they have smaller circles. A lot of the Pokemon will spawn in specific areas, and that way you can thread your uh, friendship line 
way better. It's hard. It's hard to we can't we don't catch them. We friend them. It's quite odd. But um yeah. I mean overall we've just finished our Airbnb. Make sure you talk to Bidoof again, please. I will. Uh, here you can completely, completely screw up your run. People think you're done after this, and I would, but you have to talk to Beedoff again. I don't really know why, um, but I guess we're just telling him to go off to the beach zone. And he comes right back. Man, you're fast. See, is Beaver on the way? Nope, that is all right though. And we still didn't get a good low tad. That is hilarious. <laughs> That is very unlucky, but it's all right. Out of anger, Brady did take out Trico. Poor guy. <laughs> this might work, maybe. Maybe. Uh, you can. Yeah. If you, uh, uh, no. Not that uh, angle, no. <laughs> definitely not there. Try to knock him off the cliff this time. Right. A little unfortunate, but it's fine. Just a slightly slower low tad. We tried our best, though, Ted didn't want to cooperate. I really wanted to show, show it off. I mean, you can do it with the birds. Yeah, we, we can, can do it with Pidgeotto. Yeah. Pidgeotto and Staravia. Bottle up that anger, use it later. <laughs> Here, now we can skip the cutscene. Fast travel is very useful in this game. Can't explain it enough, and it's also like a good portion of our berry routing too, because you use fast travel quite a bit, and it uses a decent amount of berries, so you have to like route it around fast travel and make sure you're not using too many berries when traveling around. Yeah, without that uh, orange berry we got in the tutorial, the berry routing for fast traveling and upgrades would be pretty much perfect. You'd have no flexibility. Pretty much, yeah. Um, if I got like a, I don't know, say a slow poke instead of a wingle, I'd have to get like an extra berry in like iceberg zone. It's kind of really tight, very, very tight. Really gl glad that red berry came in though. And here, right now, this is kind of a more of a yeah, catch them all hard. <laughs> We're nearing the end, and now I have to pretty much catch everyone I can. I still need about like four extra Pokemon. Um, should be pretty easy though, because they spawn all over the place. Um, yeah. Here I can probably get Talo. See any big birds? Uh, no. Rough. Bunch of little guys. That Talo's not bad. Hopefully, you get Pidgeot or Starby on the way back. Or hopefully, they just spawn it your way. That'd be like yeah. godlike. There's not a much room left, though. <laughs> a weird thing about Talo is there's two different Talos in Beach Zone. One of them has like two text boxes, and the other one has like six. Oops. Oh. Yeah, he just did no. a 180, so. <laughs> and I knocked him in the water. That's what you get for making me be weird. Oh, good turtle down. Ooh. Let me take those. And this also resets the Big Bird spawns, too, as well. Like we said, if every time you get a Pokemon, it completely shuffles around the spawns. Which is also a good reason why I get some other Pokemon on some routes as well. So, the reason why I got Starly in Meadow Zone was there. Maybe by chance I'd get a Shinx, like spawn directly next to me. Just scenarios like that is why shuffling some sometimes comes in handy. Also, this game likes to tease you. If you have a Pokemon that spawns, they'll respawn uh, to show you the friend text box. Also, nice story of you. Yeah, it was really, uh, very good. Yeah, you can respawn. They'll respawn and tell them that you befriended them, and then they'll respawn again because they'll spawn a different Pokemon in. Uh, story of is gonna take a dive here. There we go. That is why Staravia is phenomenal. You just bait him into the water, dives bomb right in, drowns. Instant time safe. Easiest fight in the game. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And we fight Caterpie. <laughs> oh, that's so hard, man. The wheel fight's also funny because you just punt him. Yeah, so this, uh. This attraction is just an auto-stroller, so 
Yeah, but it's uh, so I'm challenging. Just, you got to get the rings. I think it's, it's harder not to get the goal than to actually get it. I, Basically, here you just get rings, yeah. you get points, you get the goal. Easy. Um, so here, if you want to take a little bit of a stretch break, you can. <laughs> Yeah, the, the way that the attractions generally work is that the bigger and cooler looking Pokemon are typically better. So for this attraction in general, the little Starly can't move very fast from like corner to corner. It's something like Togekiss can basically get almost every ring. Mm -hmm. There's also a fun incentive for replay value where if you do the attractions, get the bonuses with every Pokemon. Uh, you unlock a legendary and do the attraction with, and that's all you see of them. Uh, but we do that in the all friends category, which is our basically our 100% but not really category. Uh, the 100% but slightly more fun category. Exactly. And by slightly more fun, we mean three hours of attraction grinding at the end. Love it. Now the true hundo is what we call it, which is basically just actual 100%. We have to best friend every Pokemon, which is really the only difference, and get every upgrade, which is also a little bit time consuming. Um, that you have to basically fight every Pokemon twice. That's why most people just generally go towards all friends. So when are you doing the true 100%? Uh, if you race me, I will. Uh, I'll get back to you. I have to get Wingo. That's alright though. Pidgeotto, if you see him all the way in a corner behind Drift Blue. Please go left. Oh no. So, a weird thing with Wingo, I haven't actually gone in a run yet, but if you go on a slope while chasing Wingo, you can actually hit Wingo in the air. Kind of like what, what I did with Starly. Pretty much becomes just as fast as Starly. I haven't gone in a run because you have to be on a slope. There's only like two slopes in Beach Zone. So. The bridge and the Pelipper Hill. But you, I don't even think I don't even think its pathing would lead to the Pelipper Hill. Actually, um, what did it go by? Yeah, well, I need to replace B Barrel, so I actually have one more chance to get Pidgeotto. Forgot, yeah, I need to replace B Barrel still. So. This is just Sharpedo and Carvana saying you can't build bridges here because Gyarados said no. Yeah, but then you also beat us in a flying game because we can't fly, so we'll build a bridge now. Yeah. Now now you can build bridges because you did Pelipper's Traction. Also, fun fact, this Bidoof is not the Meadow Zone Bidoof. This Bidoof is the sister of the Bidoof from the Meadow Zone. They, everyone is related for some reason. Everyone has affiliation. And now, we completely forgot why we were even doing this in the first place. We're getting Why Not. Why Not's Crust the Bridge. This gives us two friends, Pip-Up and Why Not. I'll also show and you know, and We Sorry. could just go straight to Gyarados, but we can't. We have to build another three bridges. With uh, two more pieces of wood. <laughs> They're Here very efficient. Pidgeotto or a Slowpoke. Um, Slowpoke might have to go out of the way for it, which may be unlucky, but generally Slowpoke's gonna be close by. And right there. No Pidgeotto, sadly. I was really trying to shuffle for it, but I didn't quite get it. So it right might there. respawn. It could. Then I could probably replace Teddy or so with it, honestly. Or I, I could actually wait, I could replace Ursing with it. I got a red berry. Wait a second. <laughs> there you go. They do need friends, though. There is a friend requirement for later attractions. It's why we are friending pe people. Uh, Bastiodon, which is going to be a later one. Aw, oh, they had to tease you, I told you. The Pidgeotto taunt. <laughs> and now they're going to be in Guam. Oh, no. Weird angle there. Oh, I see it. I saw the vision. It's right there. <laughs> So we used to actually get Buizel and Floatzel in the route, but we switched out for Psyduck and Golduck. Um, the reason is Floatzel sometimes can screw you a bit. Um, they give about the equal amount of berries, so it was a pretty nice replacement. But Floatzel, if 
Floatzel does a weird angle on the bridge, completely lose 20 seconds. It's not great. So that's why I replaced it with Psyduck and Golduck. Also, Golduck is very consistent, always in the same spot, or usually in the same area. Also, health bars, though it does take two hits for both. Mm. Floatzel it, does it, have a little bit more work on Floatzel. Yeah. So it does have three health bars, so you have to do a combo, which, whoa, intricacies in this game. Yeah, w during the hitstun of Thunderbolt, you can then dash into them and do half damage of your dash. So the one bar from Thunderbolt and then a ha another half bar from uh, dash. So you gotta do that twice. You'll probably see it. Oh, actually, no, you won't see it with Feraligator coming up, but... You'll probably see it on Glalie. Why aren't you recycling, Brady? There's <laughs> <laughs> a cute little side quest. You can recycle on this beach and uh, befriend Wailord, Krabby, the Corefish. Sure. Now, this is a quiz for the chat. Who has more legs, Krabby or Corefish? Because <laughs> that, that is a question uh, from Corsola. We didn't get to that time, but... Yeah, Course Look <laughs> gave us kind of the boring questions. Course Look gives you really easy questions, yeah. Makes sense, you... though. It's the first quiz. <laughs> Here's oh. Glenn's favorite part of the game. Glenn, world record holder in Gyarados' attraction. And yeah, I've definitely spent too much... I've spent, definitely spent too much time in this attraction. Uh... Me and another community member named Deathline, uh, we have been trading world records back and forth. We are now, I believe, joint tied world records. We have brought this down to as far as we can. There's like only two by Pokemon that can be save stop time on. By the point zero zero one. It's that tight. And this attraction is with motion controls, mind you. So if you move your arm slightly to the left, oh, you lose that point one second. Oh, oh so the fun part about this game, there's invisible walls everywhere. They don't want you falling off cliffs, and that's understandable. Uh, when you don't want people exploring, slap an invisible wall over it. The attractions are the same things, but the invisible walls are very sharp. So you can bonk your head at new speed that way. It's kind of the main way you lose time in attractions. Uh, but you can actually use the invisible walls for some funny things later on. Uh, item sliding. Ooh. Ooh. We, will, we will see some item sliding, I'm sure, in, uh... Oh, in Cavern Zone. The zone. Yeah. Yes, Cavern Zone. I wanted to say Granite Zone for some reason, but, uh, not that one. So for Alligator and Gyarados also had some beef. I'm not sure why they had beef. Oh yeah, they were just fighting randomly. I think so. They didn't explain it actually. For Alligator um, wants to be the leader of Beach Zone because Empoleon has locked himself away. So yeah, if you need any hints on Poke Park lore, I am your guy. Um, you know. Glenn, Glenn can you give us our, a For Alligator voice impression? No, my voice is shot. By the way. I, 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 for the sake of my voice, no, I can't. I do wish, but is isn't gonna happen. Reason, reason why we got Feraligator here, you may realize Feraligator is pretty beefy, so it's a lot slower. Um, gives us a whopping 60 berries, though. Or 50. What was that? I think it was 50. Can't do math right now. Um, I think it was 60. Here, there's a big old hot air balloon. Um, it's deflated though, conveniently. So now we can't just skip straight to the end. And now Piplup, Chikorita, and Charmander, which we will get later on, take a good whopping hour to fix it with duct tape. Yeah, Lapras, Lapras is gonna take us over to uh, the next zone, which is across the ocean. This is the only time you actually hear this song, too. The only time is when you use Lapras to swim. Uh, and you will notice something interesting about this uh, map layout. 
for Iceberg Zone. Uh, this is the inspiration for Pokemon Unite. It is. <laughs> Think about those circles I told you. It's just four big circles. This is... <laughs> and imagine Zapdos. <laughs> In the middle. In the middle. So currently, this man is going to go jungle, run down the middle. Yep. To try and we'll march. We will eventually go both top and bottom lane, but for now, we need to go mid all the way to the other side's base. It is poor tactics, but who cares? Um, you know, we got to go Taylor see if Napoleon's open. Taylor and Staravia are going to poke at us a little bit. Ah. <clears throat> oh, well. Yeah, they didn't like us spawn camping. Who cares? So right now the gate is completely blocked. This is where Empoleon is hiding. And the only way we can unlock the gate is have Mammal Swine, like basically beat it open. Mammal Swine is the strongest one here in the zone. And Mammal Swine is actually trapped in the ice. We're trying to find Mammal Swine right now, but Mammal Swine is completely trapped in ice. Empoleon froze him. What a mean guy. Yeah, Poke Park Lore, Empoleon did freeze Mammal Swine. Uh, very big a douche move, and then he broke the ice. So now the poor man is trapped in the background. Just got the, just got the ice beam roll. So works yeah. out for him. So now we are going to be uh, also working in real estate yet again. Uh, first we helped Badoof, and now we're going to help Glalie build his, uh, you know, his four-star hotel. Well, with one singular ice block. Yeah. So oh, for the Frost. Sake. Frostlass and Glalie, uh, they broke up. Frostlass was not very happy with Glalie, so... She's filing for a divorce. Sad days. Uh, Glalie is trying to win her back by building a resort out of Igloos. Nothing... <laughs> Nothing... Frostlass took custody yeah. of the kids. All the <laughs> snow runs. <laughs> Yeah, this is just a quick uh, give Glalie three ice blocks, and for each one we give him, more Pokemon will spawn in the area, because they want to stay in the igloos. Yeah. I don't think you guys have seen it yet, um, but I actually replaced Teddy Ursa with uh, Burmy in the route. It was like the one last minute thing I did, but for consistency's sake, I did it. But I actually might show it off either. I'll just do it, why not? Quiz. So My dad is a friendly guy. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it, Teddy Ursa oh. is a 50-50. Uh, there's one Teddy Ursa we want to talk to, and the other one we do not. Yeah. That Teddy Ursa right is there. a nerd. They only <laughs> want to do quizzes. Five seconds. <laughs> a 50-50. Man, should have just chose a better Teddy. Or a better Teddy. I'm bad. Yeah. It is probably the one that's back behind the other glue. I mean, watch it's gonna be like in front of you now. But yeah, so, yeah one, te one Teddy Ursa wants to do a quiz, which is slow, and the other Teddy Ursa wants us to chase them, which is much faster. Break it up, you two. Also, this Ursa Ring is very pissy. Never hit him with anything outside of the game, or else he'll instantly get angry and start charging at you, kind of like in the battle. Because if you get Pokemon angry, they will just start trying to beat with you. Yeah, he also does like to walk in front of you when you're fighting other Pokemon. He just wants to pick and roll. My dad is a friendly Kalelius. My dad, <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, and this one right here is the chase. Yeah, so you want this, yeah. That text box what you want, and that's how you can dictate between the two. So now for, you know, wasting our time, this man's gonna get absolutely obliterated. Oh, all the way into oblivion, bounce off the invisible wall, jeez. So we get, uh... Yeah, so here we, we will not... Yeah, we will not be friending Spiel in uh, any percent. But you need yeah. it for the ice tree. 
we're about to go to right now. Should I trigger the cutscene, guys? No. There's a big circle around the ice tree, and if you step inside it, you will get absorbed into talking with Curlia about how beautiful this tree could be if you friended like four Pokemon. Instead, Which we're gonna. Tree? Yeah, instead, we're beefing with Friend Flop. Yeah, Friend Flop controls the snow lift, the ski lift, and we, uh. We really need to go down. The man's a bit vain. Do you see the the branding in the background? It is his ski lift. Oh shoot! I, oh wow! Wait, he's a ranged attack? Yeah. He doesn't just charge <laughs> you. I've done that. <laughs> Never before seen for Brady Boo. <laughs> for Brady with many tens of thousands of attempts. This man has never seen Bubble Beam in his life. <laughs> What happened? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> All we have to do is unlock it, hit the switch with your noggin. Oh, yeah, I'm switch I, moving. We can I don't know why we it. couldn't do that before, but. <laughs> Primpop wouldn't let us. Primpop was beefing with us. Exactly. Now we gotta convince Frostlass to join back up with Glalie. The way we're gonna do that is beat her into submission. Nothing like reforming marriages. So yeah, Frostlass. Yeah. Yeah, Frostlass wants to go back. By the way, it says in the text she just ran off in a huff. However, you know, you know, she just still wants to fight you. She just wants a reason to go back to Glalie. And somehow beating Frostlass reignites that spark. Nah, it just makes her be like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I've had enough of this. Uh, I'm leaving. There, there are two more friends down here I think we're going to be grabbing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully Quagsire is a bro and just is where we want him to be. Ooh. Oh, no, he's walking away. Now I'm going to reset the spawn. <laughs> Shout out to Octillery. So in the far corner, there's a crate here, which carries a big berry, and early in the game, we gave a big berry to Munchlax. Same exact concept. But now, Quagsire, though, some most of the time is completely far away from the big berry, so you have to take a whole trip, whole vacation to get the Quagsire. So here I talk to Octillery to reset the spawn, so hopefully Quagsire's closer. Not the case here. That's all right, though. Where's the closest Quagsire? There's the finicky pickup. Oh, wow! <laughs> Good lord! That's unfortunate. Oh, that's lord. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but the big berry was delicious, so... You know. <laughs> it was all worth it. Exactly. Alright, we're gonna go back to the igloos because Frostlass is actually the only Pokemon, despite being loaded with ice types, that can unfreeze uh, or freeze the lake. Yeah, because yeah, uh, Frostlass is the only one here who has Ice Beam. Glalie doesn't have it at all, I guess. Yeah, th nope. this Glalie has Ice Shard, which apparently doesn't freeze, so... Yeah. Because it's a shard. It's meant to <laughs> He has priority, but he won't freeze things. And Piloswine, despite, you know, being part ice, couldn't freeze the lake himself. He's a physical attacker. The matter. He's got four moves. He can save one to freeze the lake. Oh. That'd be a waste of a slot. <laughs> it's a poor competitive build. Can't believe it. Shake my head. <laughs> Not even have EVO light on. Well, I mean, a Pilos one, I think, has takedown, so he's not necessarily a very competitive Pokemon anyway. So something we're going to do here is get friend Glalie. Um, oh, 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 good lord. Oh, he's angry. He's angry, bro. He's angry. He's angry. Oh, no. <laughs> um, well, look at this cutscene. He's probably going to charge him. Yeah, yeah and also, Ursa literally <laughs> attacked mid-fight. He's not resetting. He's going to keep on attacking. Yeah, yeah Ursa, watch out. He's coming around, I'm betting it. Oh, don't hit me, don't hit me. 
Actually, okay. does Ursa deal damage to Glalie? Yes. Or okay, yeah, Glalie. Yeah, Finish him off anyway. But also, Glalie can piss off Ursa Ring, and Ursa Ring can target you. Yep. So. It's it's a great time. <laughs> um, a lot, the, the main thing we do in each zone is usually friend one Pokemon that does exceptionally well in an attraction, and that's Glalie here. Uh, Glalie also does two things, gives us like 50 berries too, so it's also really important, but Glalie is like one of the fastest in this attraction coming up with Apollyon, so that's really the main reason we get him. They also in Defrosted yeah. quite quickly. Yeah. Pikachu didn't even have to use a fire attack. The gate is so. Mammoth Swine is pissed off of the gate, not Empoleon. So yeah, he's he his reasoning is oh we had differences. Who cares? Oh, what's that? Shouldn't I be frozen shut? If if life wasn't so simple, things aren't in black and white. He froze you and left you out in the middle of nowhere. These guys are too forgiving. This is why we have to resort to our ways of friendship. I'm not gonna lie. We could have just talked it out. Who are you? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Piplup takes a stand. We forgot about him back in beach, so but he's just come back. Cool. Yeah. Not sure how he got here. I guess he swam, but he's here now. Must have used Lapras. All that means Piplup must have bet this friend Lapras. Man. Big guy, little guy. Here, my favorite attraction actually. Pulling on snow slide. Really fun. Uh, IL wise, it's really difficult actually. Like the motion is a lot more finicky than any other any of the other motion in the game. So like beach zone, the beach zone attraction is nothing compared to this. You can slide all over the place with this. Oh, see right there, I just hit the wall. I didn't even touch the wall actually, but the invisible walls are so massive. Yeah, Glalie is just too convenient to pick up for this one. Uh, there's a lot of other Pokemon we could be using, but... Lazy on. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Pitbull's like the next fastest, I think, which is like 10 seconds behind. Yeah, and Glaceon, uh, Glaceon's a friend requirement, so... You don't have enough friends to friend them. Yeah, so every evolution in this game requires you to have a lot of friends, so they won't friend you if you don't have friends. Not one, there's one specific one, Jolteon, because all, because all he is is an EV requirement, you just gotta friend EV, that's more. Kind of like a mean girl situation. Mm -hmm. Kind of Alright, and oh now... <laughs> Shaking in place, visibly frustrated while I'm dancing here, boogieing down. <laughs> and now we get the Prism Shard. Prism Peace. Yeah, it... In all friends right now, we would continue to do this attraction with every other Pokemon that we have up to this point. But we don't need that many berries. So... Mag <laughs> Magikarp included. Magikarp is probably the Pokemon that is in the most attractions. Bar Pikachu. Uh, it's quite funny. That man just jumps around. He does slide very well. He's actually, isn't he worst? Yeah, but he still doesn't <laughs> slide. <laughs> nah, my be the the best one has to be um, which Pokemon just? Sfield obviously is the best one. He just rolls, little guy. <laughs> Peralgar <laughs> takes up the whole entire screen. Yeah. Yeah, so does Blastoise, though, and Lapras. We're gonna spawn uh, in Drifblum here. We're gonna return to the meeting place. Um, we gotta go back to the hub world and go to a different gate. And also, we're gonna unlock two upgrades right now. That's kind of the main reason why we friended so many Pokemon. As well as, you know, we, we have a friend requirement in the future. So, it all kind of leads into each other pretty nicely. No pilot spawn? Hey. I forget. If, um, my, my brain just. My brain molds between all friends and any percent. But. It's like pilot spawn? Why did you, you not get my guy? Sorry. Sorry. That fight is pretty slow. 
and we don't need it for any percent. True. So yeah, Pikachu got a branded balloon. Shout out to him. Uh, his sponsorships are going well. Yeah, so like pay attention to how many berries we're spending here. Also, three fifty for the first upgrade, and one thousand. A whopping 1,000 for the next one. In the beginner intermediate courses, this is how they get you. These pyramid schemes. <laughs> yeah, Normally so we're down extra... all the way to 85. <laughs> <laughs> and this is with the extra 50 berries you got in the beginning, by the way. So I would have been left with 35. Now that we're poor, we actually just are faster. So. And norm normally, I'd actually get Burmy instead, so I would have been left with 15. I just wanted to show off Teddy or so. But normally, I'd climb up the treehouse, climb up the spiral, miss the platforming, and <laughs> talk to Burmy. Cavern zone, we're entering right now. Just, just, just a mine. Yeah, Bring this zone is a little interesting. Hopefully we get to actually find the Pokemon we need to find here. <laughs> I don't, don't speak. It's, 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 it's not good. Uh, I think Glenn in particular really likes Torchic. I hate this. Uh, this zone stinks. <laughs> I just, my current PB isn't that good, right? I have to grind. That is just how I have to play. But my current PB has about 50 seconds lost in this zone alone. To looking for a Torchic that was hiding behind the obstacle hop. Uh, I never saw it. I had to do Quiz Meowth. I failed Quiz Meowth. I was crying. Uh, how many Zubats are in this cave? Uh, where, me personally, I have a hard time finding Magnemite very often. He just, he's just hiding somewhere, and then he moves somewhere else. One, two, three, four. I feel like there's not 11, though, I swear. There is. Oh, man. That's what Meowth says. Mm -hmm. You can uh, hear Aaron. Aaron yeah. Aaron is the gossiper, and Mawel as well. They're gossiping. They're deciding who blocked up the hot spring. And somehow, we have to feed him first before he gives us any answers. That's an It's the other one. Now. It's who stole the rail. They don't care about the hot spring. So who stole the rail? Also, Poke Park lore, uh, Aaron, uh, Coles, Mawile, a cutie. So... True. There you go. Mawile, all the way in the back. It's alright, though. This is also probably the hardest chase when you don't know what to do. Yes. No, Other than Lucario, the... which you don't do in any percent. Oh, good lord, yeah. Lucario. is a pain in the butt. Yeah, but Mawile, you can see she has a, a mouth on the back of her head, and she will bite you. She got some chompers. So instead, you, you just electrocute. And you can actually save three seconds and hit Mawile on the side, but it's very inconsistent. Yeah, inconsistent. Like, there's no go-to way of doing it. Yeah, it really depends on her pathing. Yeah. You will see us go to, like, the side to avoid stuff in the next zone. Uh, for the Pokemon, I believe it's Ninetales yeah. and Ponyta. They start yeah, spewing yeah. stuff behind you, so you'll attack her from the sides. It's what you want to do with Mawile, but it will never happen. <laughs> Magnemite! So yeah, we freed Magnemite, but he's not our friend yet. We still need to find him again. All we have to do is just talk to him and he becomes a friend. Yeah, and hopefully he's just hanging out, but... And he's not. So, yeah. Just like the rest of the masochists, he just, he's like, your headbutt is like quite sick. Not gonna lie. Yo, dap me up, homie. Let's go, bro. And then they're just friends. See here? Oh, I was gonna run out of the way because there's a lot of Pokemon in the way, but I buffered it, so I couldn't stop it. And it's alright. I buffered Dash there, so it kinda messed up my pathing. Yeah, you don't want to accidentally just run into Scizor. Magnemite, where are you? You're not over here, you're all the way behind here. 
Hey, big man. Yeah. Magnemite likes to hide from you. That's just how this game works. <laughs> now we're gonna talk to Marowak. One of my, f actually my favorite battle. There's a little bit of a strategy here. You can hide behind the crates. You're kind of just camping him out. And he's really stupid. He runs right into the crates. What a dumb He is, he is also a ground type. So you cannot thunderbolt him. Oh, you're doing my strat, yo. Uh, and now, <laughs> see, there's no close by crates. So I gotta jump over the bone. Do it normally. Shoot. Not as cool. <laughs> It's fun because when I did all friends, I was I was just jumping on the crates, and then he disrupted his attack. Brady messaged in my chat. He was just like, "Yo, I'm gonna cop." <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I don't even think it saves any time. It's no, not it's bad. just cool. Yeah, it's just cool. Uh, hi Diglett, how you doing, buddy? He's so smart. <laughs> So basically, the lore for this zone is that Marwoyle stole the crate, hid it in a, sp 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 uh, in a space that you will see, and the only two people that saw it were Aaron, you know, uh, who was going to confide for his love, and then Diglett, who is just stuck inside a box. Uh, but somehow. Somehow. They can dig but, underground. I think yeah. Meanwhile, uh, aside from that, the hot spring uh, has dried out, which is where we are in right now. Now, if you could put two to two together, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> we are going to get this rail, and the other thing is going to be solved quite quickly. We feed Snorlax, Snorlax gets up. Also, how did Snorlax get to the cavern zone? This man has walked a while. <laughs> he was He's in the tutorial. Oh, oh, there it is. Yep. And now the hot spring will fill up about two inches. Because <laughs> that's very comfortable for the Pokemon. Dipping your toes right in the water. I mean, yeah. Snorlax has the right idea. Yeah. I'll sleep here until the promised one comes back. I wonder who the promised one is. Not gonna lie. Uh, I think it's Chikorita. I also think it's Chikorita. Yep. Pretty green. Okay, so with this rail, Brady is going to do something very cool eventually. If he can pick it up. <laughs> right? <laughs> Items are like impossible to pick up in this game. For some reason, the hit detection on them are crazy. You have to be like right on the money. And sometimes when you're right on the money, you're not on the money. At all. Yeah, like they're out pretty much looking at it and I couldn't pick it up at all. Build this tomahawk. Empty box dash. Uh, Meowth, annoying. Uh, we don't want to talk about there it. I'm going to drift him though because later I'm about to talk to him and friend him. If you talk to him and fast travel to him enough times, you just get a free friend. That's why we get it here. Because you have to keep in mind yep. we have a friend requirement we have to reach. You also yeah. come back here. Later in the game. Yep. Yeah. We do need to have playing. enough friends for a uh, steal on. Oh, yep. Here we Sold go. Sold the name from Wind Waker. <laughs> One of the only texts in this game because the game is so polished. Mess it up. Oh. Uh oh, outrageous. It's actually harder than you think for no reason. It's because you're faster now. Yes, yeah, so you're this faster. Is item Still saves time though, instead of walking all the way to Mr. Mime. And there's the one Poke Park skill you can learn. Just dash against an invisible wall, and you've done it. You've done all the glitches inside <laughs> Poke Park Wii. I'm you gonna do successfully now, so. push the rail. <laughs> Gibble. Also, this game loves to tell you which Pokemon don't have. Yeah, that Thunderbolt does not work on. Uh, they like to announce it. Whenever you see How a Pokemon. Would... Yeah. How else would you know that Gibble is a ground type? Marowak tells you, Gibble tells you. They do their best. No, I don't think they're the ground type, though. I mean, they're in the cavern zone. What else would they be? Meow. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, Snorlax, too? Yeah, jeez. What are they doing there? Machamp, Torchic, 
<laughs> Magnemite. Oh, I get it, buddy. I get it. Goldat, Zubat, <laughs> Mawile. <laughs> Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Mom. <laughs> there is, in fact, only four ground types here. I'm fact checking in my brain. You're right. And all of this Chat on. is just to get the minecart. That was the whole reason we were even here in the first place. Yep. Well, also, we need we need them prism shards, and in oh, order to get guy. prism shards, we Bro. do need fifty friends. Oh there my we god. Go. Oh. I'll go into right two first. Interesting. Well, yeah, reset torture to be closer. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, it could have worked either way. The fact that he yeah. caught him. Uh, fun thing for Chase is if you uh, tackle the front or back man, the Chase will stop. So that's another way you can end up. He just caught it. Nice crane to his post up. Um, a cool thing, or not really a cool thing. Uh, Pikachu auto locks in on the Pokemon you're chasing. So it's actually hard to, to move away from who you're looking at. So I actually wasn't able to move out of the way of Kronidos there. I was forced to hit him, sadly. Yeah, uh, Kronidos hit a pick and yeah. roll. Diglett, you friend for free just by talking. Some Drifflim. Poor chick, poor chick, where is this guy gonna be? Where is this guy gonna be? <laughs> it's gonna be like, no neural lock right in front of him. Pass you know. Oh, hopefully. Oh, oh. Hey, there oh, he is. is. <laughs> See, I would never get that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never failed a Torchic once. I've never had bad Torchic luck ever. I, Only I have a, I have a clip of Torchic being further down this hallway. I'm fighting him, about to tackle him, and Raichu just cuts in front of me. <laughs> just takes the hit. <laughs> Only got to take the hit for his friend. <laughs> Mr. President, get down. All right, we should have enough friends for good old Bass Yodon. There you go. Yeah. And I know this is a uh, that you actually don't even have to play Bass Yodon to uh, go on to the next. I would yeah. know. I think that in bingo. Yeah. But you do need this for uh, not the next attraction, but the one after that. So, so might as well get it now. Get the ball in the same spot so the points gather up more and more. Uh, so the strategy I usually just go with is just hit it in the right side. Um, then it stays consistent. You don't really have to care too much. And we're also trying to hit a certain point barrier. So right now I'm trying to hit 4,000 to 9,000 points. Um, and that way I get to skip the bonus and also get the goal at the same time. That's also why we're using Raichu here. Um, because the bonus for Raichu is very high, where the goal to just finish the attraction is only 4,000 points. And that is it. We just throw the game. This game can go on forever, actually. You can just keep playing it. But we have to throw it to move on with the run. Skip the bonus. Save two seconds. There we go. This is also a weird one where it's legendary isn't a legendary, it's just metagross. Uh, but he comes so, one per screen. Dude is massive. Yeah. You could have just had, like, Kyogre. Just Dude. lay across the line. Could have been a big, good pick. No. Wait, is, wasn't no. Ky Kyogre was a model in this, though, right? Didn't Firework, like, find that? Pretty sure. Yeah, we I also, <laughs> I can't wait till we find we manage to get a randomizer of this game going. Bro, right? all of a sudden, all of a sudden we get just like, other than the static Pokemon, we just get like a Baneri in here. That's what I want. Uh, we're gonna be talking to Doug Trio, free friends. Gotta love him. And we're gonna Another be heading to the lava zone. Is we get a lot of free friends. They're fast, um, and most of them are near the end, sadly. We're we don't need a friend requirement really at all. So very quick here, Lava Zone is uh, interestingly enough, probably the source of the biggest RNG in the game. If you can, well, you can just lose enough. a ton of time. <laughs> Brady, could you tell us the odds of, you know, Gold Ore, according to you? <laughs> One in four. 
Okay, so we the the community uh, thinks it's one and five. Brady, who has run this game probably more than the community, thinks it's one and four. Uh, either way, uh, gold ore is something that you don't want to get in this run. It's something you want in all friends. Uh, so basically, what happens is the situation. Uh, if you want iron ore, you're gonna get gold ore. If you want gold ore, you're gonna get iron ore. That's just how the world works. Uh, yeah, for I, now. sometimes it feels like a 50-50. And sometimes you get 30 iron ores and one gold ore. Uh, I think my record is fifth try iron ore. Okay, so if we're going for iron ore, yeah. Uh, I, in my all friends, my highest is I got 18 iron ore before a gold ore. Uh, and the highest I've seen is 21. By whom? That, that poor guy had to just tackle and tackle and tackle and tackle the drill for over five minutes. Isn't that we'll see it soon. <laughs> I'd believe it. Oh, this... Yeah, you'll see it soon, but this is not a shortcut scene either. So retrying this drill, uh, it's painful sometimes. You lose exactly 30 seconds. So it's the main reset point of the run, right? And it's halfway through. So it kind of slaps you a little bit, right? When you get a gold ore, you have to reset. That's 30 whole seconds. Hit him on top here. A very infamous fight because his head is the size of Texas and he reaches you from five hit him on tops away. Yeah, the wind around his spinning is just a much bigger hitbox than even he is. That's why I run all the way back here. Now, we also need to friend one extra Pokemon here as well. We need to get Magby, but we get a second try. Believe it or not, we have to get two Iron Ores in a row. So I come back here a second time, and I have to get a Magby. Yeah, and the reason you get Magby up here instead of down at the bottom of the hill is kind of similar to Teddy or so earlier. The, the Magby's at the top want to chase, the Magby's at the bottom want to fight. Oh! And we got gold. Looks like I lose 30 seconds. So now as we wait for the drill to slowly come up and then... The lever to come back into place. And tackle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the gold ore is just still there, taunting us. You could have had what we had. Uh, all friends. <laughs> yes. Just turn into an all friends run right now. <laughs> Better RNG. Yeah, seriously though, like all friends, like the RNG isn't even that bad at all because all the Pokemon are just there. Yeah, you get all the friends. Yeah. They're just all on your way. Uh, Torkoal here is just saying, uh, my goal in life is to make your life harder, so have fun. Um, there's a group of like eight Torkoal here, and like Ursa, and they just get pissed off for no reason, and they can just hit you. Um, here I'm going to item slide. Uh, doesn't save too much time, but if you nail it, you save a good four seconds. Right on the money. The invisible walls are like a triangle, so they zigzag back and forth. So that's why we don't item slide it too far. Otherwise, I'd like item slide it all the way to the end. But the invisible walls are so wacky that you can't really slide it too far. Here, we're going to turn into an iron top. If you mess it up, you have to go all, all the way back and get roll for another iron ore. Or actually, we're making a bar this time. Whoops, my bad. I mixed it up. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, make the bar first. <laughs> Don't um, forget the lever's broken. Yeah. Don't forget to interact with the cutscene and then uh, interact with the cutscene, then pick it up and then make another cutscene and then run into it. Complex. Wow. Yeah, we didn't know. We didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Please pick up, thank you. I've had so many issues with pickups this run. It's crazy. That's just Pikachu. <laughs> yeah. That is just Poke Park Wii Pikachu's adventure for the Nintendo Wii. Wii U. Couldn't for me. 
A load time is actually not that important to be honest in this game. Yeah, it's actually really surprising too. Loading times are only different on emulator, right? Yeah. I think yeah. so, but I don't even know how, how fast it is. If it's also, really fast, I don't mind running that. You want to talk about uh, Poker Park Japanese? The, da oh, yeah. the Japanese so, version? It's the same exact game, just in a different language, right? But it saves oh. a good six minutes. So there's, a, fast. there's a couple differences. Oh, yeah. Other than so, the quiz being annoying, uh, skill <laughs> games. So, uh, in terms of friending Pokemon, uh, there are a couple Pokemon, especially in the old friends category, where they require you to make five skill games in a row. Uh, for the Japanese version, you have to do them before interacting with anything. Uh, in the English version, you can do like two of them, do an attraction, and then come back, and then finish three, and still works. But for stuff like Scizor, you have to do five in a row, and you can't goof up. It's like, quite insane. Also, it will take a second, uh, Iron War again. But, there was like a couple. Other than fireworks that. Fireworks the hard way though. So firework, we didn't actually know the differences at all because no one actually ran JPL friends. Uh, firework ran into the game just expecting it just to be English version. Uh, was very, very wrong. Had to completely adapt on the spot. Lose like 20 minutes. You feel bad for the guy. Well, he was just making sure. He, it, like his sole goal was to see if the route worked the same. Because for all friends, there's definitely not a 65 page doc that I made for everything that you need to do. Uh, other than that, I mean, he, he followed it to a T. It honestly worked out well until that scenario happened, and then we're just like, okay. Uh, we also have labbed out questions in the server. Everything is like listed and stuff like that. The funny thing is, Poke Park is now one of the nicest resource heavy communities I've been in. It's quite nice. We have we have a guide for everything except item sliding, but item sliding so self-explanatory. I don't even need to make a guide. I think I do. Also, also ice tree percent is only a pace spin, but other than that, I mean, like we take it. Uh, didn't I make a guide now? I think I think I have this document right of it, right? It was a pace spin. That was death ones. No, I think I've uploaded. I uploaded a document like a few months ago. Um, I, I just took snippets from any percent because it's basically just any percent, just cut in half. But yeah, very resource heavy. Very, very resource heavy. We also have our own bingo board. Gotta love it. Bingo Sync loves us. Uh, bingo honestly in this game is quite good. Bingo in this in this category, this game is really good for bingo. It's quite nice. I lost my five streak to Glenn. Glenn is insane at bingo for no reason. Dude is nutty at it. That's all I'm good at, bro. But I, it's what I grind for. Here we're gonna play some Beyblades. Very, you're like. <laughs> it's you pretty easy. 5,000 points, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, in, uh -oh. in all friends, I lost about five minutes of this minigame. Yeah, so yeah, later the... on, like, like, like we said, bigger Pokemon are better, but that means you also have to get more points. So if you mess up and don't get enough points, you have to lose a good, what, like, minute and then an extra, like, 10 minute, 10 seconds to menuing. So you lose, like, a minute 10 just for losing this. Yep. And sometimes with the high score requirements of something like Rhyperior, uh, you might just get unlucky. Yeah, this it is all really Pokemon we use here, where it's getting the goal, passing it on. Isn't the yep. legendary? Oh yeah, the isn't the legendary Groudon in this one? Oh uh, yeah, it is. Also, oh, wait, cute no, that. No, Groudon's for Blaze Against Attraction. Yeah, it's Heatran for this one. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Heatran. Uh, cute little thing about this game. Uh, if you enter specific passwords into the game, because passwords are a thing. Shout out to the Wii. Uh. What you can do is basically you can have legendaries kind of spawn in the overworld. Also, hi Charmander, we haven't seen you. Now he wants to battle us as soon as he sees us. No hug or yeah. anything. Both throttle in the battle. 
Uh, one thing I really wish you could do in this game is hit Pokemon in lava. That'd be so much time saved. <laughs> you can't though, sadly. It makes sense though, because that sounds like a very grueling death. I mean, well, Charmander did say that Blaziken saved him from drowning in the lava, so... So it's something that he doesn't want to do. Also, Charmander has swore absolute loyalty to Blaziken, which, simp move, we don't care about him anymore. Uh, so now we're gonna, you know, what better to finish off a battle than, uh, quiz time. Metatite does not ask for consent when challenging to the quiz, unlike every other one. Iron Top. Iron Ore is actually right, too. Technically, but... Uh, he does not like that answer. Torterra. Wow, I got top, top, top. There was a little bit of RNG, well, obviously the quiz, but... Um, the answers can be in any random spot, too, as well, so you have to menu down. Oops. And Metatite is immovable. <laughs> he is a stoic being. <laughs> Um, and we're friending Ponyta up here. This is the Pokemon we were talking about that gives you that extra dash upgrade. Free dash upgrade for free. Um, but no, it, it doesn't increase your speed quite. You have to time your your one presses to get your speed dash upgrade. It's, you'll see, but Ponyta is also one of the hardest chases in the game next to Mawile. There's a fire trail behind them. Damn. Also, Poke Park Lore, this is the sister of the meeting place Ponyta. Uh, they're homies. And it's the only reason why you get Double Dash, because they're like, cool. Wow, you met my sister. Good job. Farfetch, we're fighting him, because he's somehow guarding the lover, I guess. The, strong, yeah. the strongest fire type. Far Farfetch guarding Blaziken's lair. <laughs> With another guard, Meg Cargo, who can't even move at all. <laughs> oh, shoot. Boxes. This is what you get for right. chatting. <laughs> <laughs> shoot. A quarter of your health gone. Farfetch. Yeah, mighty Farfetch. Another <laughs> movable object here. But we go right through him. He's a ghost. He's not actually there. Metatite was tougher. So, we're gonna lower the bridge. I don't know why this bridge is here in the first place, but... It's cool. If you look at the background here, you see the massive amount of polygons. And the... Graphics of this game... It's really nice! I mean, the lava goes all the way in the corner. If you look in, like, Dolphin Emulator, you can see the lava, like, loop around the back. Like, they laid out this map heavily, and you only see, like, a quarter of it. This, this lava zone also broke my friend's computer, because there's so many polygons on screen. Now, uh, and we get to fight Charmander again. <laughs> Charmander, but on steroids. He did level up a little bit, but not quite enough. Because one minute difference, he gains two extra health. <laughs> He dropped yeah. literally 1.8. He dropped 1.8k berries. Now I gotta prove my power again. Blaze again. Steal his lunch money again. He's got nothing left now. Good lord. Or he's gotta rub off his eyes too. The neat thing about Blaziken's attraction is it doesn't really have any, any inspiration. Oh, why did I do that? Oh, wait, no, no, never mind. Um, he doesn't have any inspiration. <laughs> all these are either like slides, motion controls, all that. This is a lot different. It's just karate chopping rocks. They kind of like made up a random attraction. They didn't really base this off of anything. And we're at the point now where we actually don't need berries. So we can pick Pikachu yeah. and squeeze, try to anyway, squeeze in between the 5k and 6k gap. Sometimes you can overshoot it to see though. I think you can't get more than two to three hundreds. Alright, now I think I have to aim for only one hundreds. 
I think one more 300. Oh, is this man gonna get greedy? Uh oh. Oh, concussion. Oh, it's 5k. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, there he is. Oh, Alright, good. <laughs> now we just keep getting uh, pummeled. <laughs> Save a quick two seconds. There we go. Yeah, it really just saves one text box, but I mean, might as well go for it. Uh, right. oh, also, get, get ready for the fun strat. Oh my goodness, I can't wait for this insane strat. <laughs> we are going to save for the first time. Yes. We're going to open up our pokey pad for the last time. Oh, uh, we have eight prism pieces. We don't friend. Do we friend Blaziken here? No. Blaziken does not get friended until you save the world. He is a bit annoying. <laughs> Alright. Exiting lava zone. Now I have to spam the plus button. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> um, the reason why we do save and quit, though, is it saves actually like a good. 20 seconds. Uh, normally we'd have to loop all the way back down to the beginning. Um, this teleports you right directly to the beginning. Save and quit. This is also why you want to put your game on the first file as well. You can spam the two button quickly, menu through, and now you're teleported to the beginning of Lava Zone. We're going to teleport to the meeting place as well. We're not getting- we are getting the pony to upgrade, that is the main reason, also we're just done with the zone. Next up is the most movement heavy zone, the haunted zone. Uh, most of it is just because of the double dash movement, but also it's very tight corners, right? You think about this is a 90 degree movement on a 40, on a D-pad, in a 360 degree game. A lot, a lot of words there, but it's very hard. This is my favorite one. <laughs> Do a little hide and seek. Nah, this game has Dude. character. Yeah. That's all you need. As you expect, literally some of the best spin-off games are on the Wii. You got Poke Park, you got Park 2, and you got Battle Revolution. And then Pokemon Ranch. Who doesn't for who doesn't remember Pokemon Ranch? Wait, that's a the game? Yeah, the WiiWare game that's literally just Pokemon Box, but randomly. But if you put 1,500 Pokemon in there, you get Mew. Yes. <laughs> also, Pokemon Rumble. That game's look pretty good, yeah. Pokemon Rumble is also pretty good. Yeah. Chikorita, the carpenter, finished off the treehouse. Is it finished off? I don't no. think it needs any more upgrades, right? Or do they add one more upgrade after Haunted? After, well, after, after Haunted. once you get back. Yeah, after okay. Haunted, it upgrades, and then... You know, the fun stuff. Either way, Mishrevis is here, telling us to go to the Haunted Zone. Okay. <laughs> okay yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. yeah, why not? We're gonna get here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pik or Ponyta is teaching us about uh, Mario Kart right now. Yes. And now we're faster than Ponyta somehow. Double Dash. Very, actually a lot tighter than you'd realize. There is a little bit of a... There's a visual cue, but... Yep. But it's not that big of a window, surprisingly. It's only like, a, I would say... I would say five frames if I had to guess. I'll say Which six. Is, oh yeah, it's just six, sure. Yeah. Plenty, yeah. Plenty, of, uh, plenty of room to mess up, though. Yeah. If you get a ring around you that is your double dash, you will be seeing it as best as Brady can. Yeah, the, uh, effectively, lines are, like, able to see in the grass, too, though. Yeah, Brady is dashing, and then at the exact moment, pressing dash again to go even faster. And he's going to try and chain those across this bridge, and just in general. This is a good practice point of where to do it, too, if you ever want to practice your double dashes. This bridge is an excellent point of doing it. So there's both an audio and visual cue. So the moment it like stopped, you can press it again, or the moment the lines disappear. So it's pretty easy to tell when to do it. Sometimes you just yeah. mess up. So. In Haunted Zone in particular, you can see the visual cue pretty clearly. Yeah. Just because it's dark. 
There are three attractions here in Haunted Zone, and we will be doing the first one. Ten Growth is quite nice. We're going to be using Raichu uh, for this one. Oh, we got Raichu in the Cavern Zone. Really the only reason why we got Raichu in the Cavern Zone. Ask you on. Convenient Pokemon to get. Now there's a two frame window here. Didn't get it. Uh, I wanted to go for it. I just wanted to go for it. Show it off, but very impossible window at the beginning with Raichu. You save two seconds. Also, the bonuses here are quite funny. Uh, they go down by 0.2 because they expect this game to be hard. Uh, you can do this in less than eight seconds with almost every character. It's quite funny. Yeah, like I messed up in the beginning and I still have 18 seconds of leeway. <laughs> oh, look at Tangrowth's model though. Like, <laughs> he, he is just waving his arms. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen uh, Crow Gunk's model where he's just swaying his arms back and forth? <laughs> so, we're gonna enter the haunted house now. The outside is only a portion of the run. We actually in front of a couple Pokemon here later in the end. Enter, enter the haunted house, talk to Driftloon. Somehow we can't enter it, we need permission first. It's not even locked. And Duskull is going to give us a quick tour of it. Yeah, since we're the 999th visitor. Duskull. <laughs> why did you get 99? I don't know why. Is this what we were? Yeah. Yeah, but there's not even like 999 Pokemon, it's weird. They just this... double down. Most people Alaska. just re-enter. <laughs> the gate was locked though. Yeah, I mean, you're a ghost. You... Yeah, you can just walk through. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Dusko's actually just been stacking up the numbers himself. He's just been going in and out. <laughs> So right now in Haunted Zone, the double dashes don't matter too much because you just get cut off by cutscenes. Um, double dash is more important later on um, when there isn't too many cutscenes getting in your way. But for right now, uh, we're just going to try to do them anyway because they're fast, but you really don't save much time doing them. This is really the only spot where you can really do them. There we go. Taking those corners is pretty hard because you're going so fast and trying to turn at 90 degrees. <laughs> uh, Ghastly, we're about to do here. We're going to do the chase, and it's similar to Starly where we have to hit him in the air. Yeah, with Ghastly, uh, you can basically just buffer it, though. <laughs> yeah, you can actually buffer it. It's really easy. Fortunately, he doesn't go very far. When he's trying to run away from you. He's just like, haha, I'm above you. Sucker. Yeah. Um, and I actually learned this recently. You can do the same thing with Haunter, too. Ooh. Like, I was going to incorporate Haunter in the run, but then I realized, like, every single Pokemon we get in the run afterwards is either talk or similar to, like, Ghastly, where you just get, like, immediately. Here we see Gengar, Luigi mentioned himself. He is stuck in the painting. Uh, if you actually talk to him again, he will pop out and you can beef with him, but... For now, we only need him to trigger the Dust Snore attraction, and we're just yep. gonna leave. I mean, yeah. he has no purpose to us, we don't care about him. Uh, like, so... The Gengar fight is a little bit... too much for any percent. Yeah. Uh, he has a move that inverts your controls. Oh, whoa! Did it not... Wow! Oh, I had to talk to him. I thought, I thought that was a cutscene for some reason. I don't know why. Jeez. World record player right here, guys. <laughs> yeah, so Dustmore's attraction, it's kind of like Bulbasaur's attraction, except there's walls in the way. So you shake a lot. This is where your wrist might hurt. Uh, I have a Cronitos world record in this, actually. I was just doing a random JP run, and in my PB, I actually got the world record just randomly. I was just shaking. Yeah, so walls don't really mean anything. Cranidos just goes through them. Look at that wrist movement, by the way, guys. Look at this. Oh, jeez. I think that tied world record, actually. Hold on. I can check for you. 
I'll check. Uh, it's either like a nine point one, like one, or I think it's three one. I don't know. I'll check for you. So that was pretty good. I didn't get hit by too many spinning racks. There is an RNG aspect to it too, actually. Of course there is. <laughs> um, there can be like two spinning racks going downwards, or there can be three in your way. Uh, and world so record is a nine point zero eight. You are nowhere what? close. <laughs> Oh, okay. So I got too many spinner racks then. Okay. <laughs> I thought it was. It felt really good. Yes, yeah, so that's good. Second attraction. <laughs> All right. Now, because we are esteemed guests, Dustical will let us into the main hall uh, where we will find the scariest ghost type Pokemon that you will see in your lifetime. Yep, that's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> A little bit of a spoiler. He's coming up right now. The, oh, the, there leader, is. the leader of all ghost Pokemon. <laughs> so much. They really make an emphasis though to really show you that Pichu is just so strong-willed. I think when you talk yeah. to him, he tells you it, and then he tells you there. Yeah, the, the piano is uh, broken right now. And yeah. Mistrevis wants us to go get some new threads for it. Really messing up these double dashes here. Okay, now we're going to... Oh, why'd you go there, Pikachu? As you can this see, this is the like... hardest run, though. Like you see, these angles are nuts. They're just constant ninety-degree angles. So as you can see, Brady's jumping to cut the angles down. Like, yep. Your in-air movement is going to be nice because it's the only way you can kind of turn out of double dashes. Double dashes are quite, like, steady. And yeah. you're not going to get much turning out of this. Abra sleepy. That's just like me. Yeah, if you're if you're sleepy, you should go to bed. That's basically what Abra tells you right here. I'm sleepy, and you should sleep when you when you feel sleepy. That is worse yep. to go by. Genius. Uh, this is uh, probably the best part of the run because, as you may have noticed, we are on the opposite side of the house from the piano, and Spinarak has given us the thread for the piano. And now we're walking for two minutes. So, so you can't actually item slide anywhere at all. I've tried it. There's so many invisible walls that zigzag in the way, and that isn't even the main reason either. Pikachu actually just phases through the string when you place it down. So the string isn't even really a hitbox at all. You just phase right through it. It's too flat. Yeah, there yeah. isn't even like a chance of item sliding it. And I was thinking, oh, so it's flat, so you can just place it down and just like push it with your body going in a straight line. No, you can't. It's a hitbox as well, even though it's not. It's really awkward. It also like slides all, all over the place too. The yeah, this is uh, <laughs> a, a lot of just holding up on the D-pad. <laughs> um, so why did the piano break in the first place? Who broke it? Uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> Glenn broke the piano. <laughs> it had it coming. But uh, bring the. The mischievous the piano is magically fixed, and now we are trying to find a Rotom. So that's the kind of the main reason why we're in the Honda Zone in the first place is we're trying to find Rotom. Rotom's missing. We're trying to discover where Rotom is. Mischievous and Miss Magius are trying to guide us in the direction of Rotom. Rotom's in a really sneaky spot, and Miss Magius has appeared. <laughs> Opening all of the red gem doors. Also unlocks Pokemon like Riolu. And that's it. Look at this area. <laughs> Riolu is yeah. locked behind piano. I guess the library as well, but... Yeah. So here there's a mysterious gap in the bookcase. Now, what do you suppose we do with the with the gap, especially when they're highlighting book, and there's this book sitting next to Sableye with a key on it. It's very yes. green. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Sableye just wanted to read a new book, so. Pulls us impatience. We tell him he's a nerd. Now we have to fight him in a quiz. Uh. It was broken. Ooh. Ooh. That's why the ball can play in the attraction. 
haunted house, Chifloon. There you go. I thought you were going to trust go. <laughs> I've gotten stumped by that one many times, actually. That's why I hesitated a little bit. Now, I don't know where I should put this book. I mean, there's a big hole in the bookshelf, but like, I don't know. Oh! Oh, this just magically flies right into this into the space. Oh, there's there's the basement. <laughs> really not looking. sure. Really not sure how stable I got that book off the bookshelf. <laughs> Jumped. <laughs> Think stable I can jump. I mean, but it, if the bookshelf was like hidden away, <laughs> he has to get the book off the shelf to like retract the door. Uh, no, this is one of the attractions to shoot them up it's really cool traction um if your motion controls don't work <laughs> you can't play this game at all um yeah. i've lost many runs to my sensor bar not functioning and i die and i lose a good minute <laughs> hopefully it works today and it's we're cooking so here we want to hit the goal 5000 and just like Bastiodons, we also want to throw the games away. And an interesting key point of this too is you can take your time. Um, they're all all the Pokemon spawn in a set manner, so you can wait here for five seconds, shoot no one, and you can shoot everyone and wait for five seconds, and there's no difference. So you can take your time. You don't have to really be good at this. You have to be good. Just just don't be really bad. And here I want to hit Honor because it gives me 200 points. Gets Ghastly to go ahead further, saves like one second. And there's actually no Pokemon we can actually get in a route that's fast enough that would actually skip the bonus. So we're forced to get the bonus here. Not that it's really that big of an issue anyway. And the, that is Rotom's attraction. Now we are actually done with on its own. Well, almost done. There are a couple more friends to get. So, like we said earlier, um, legendaries can be played in each attraction, and sometimes there isn't legendaries like Metagross. Rotom's actually one of them, and Rotom's the only like overworld Pokemon that can be used in an attraction. That is a legendary. Oh, that that corner is impossible. Um, basically, Rotom's treated as like a legendary, like the best Pokemon you can get. So if you play, I think Rotom is actually in Rotom's attraction, isn't? It? Yeah. Uh, if you play Rotom yep. enough time, get all the bonuses, you can play Rotom in its own attraction. Gotcha. Now we saved the day. Somehow they didn't find Rotom down there, even though they can fly through the bookshelf. Interesting. Also, Rotom's so gonna be... trap down there. <laughs> you're looking for Electrode here. Um, Electrode actually saves 15 seconds it's crazy um and it's completely rng is electro gonna be here was that oh, it past them yeah oh yeah okay and there we go save 15 seconds so it's either a choice between two different pokemon you either get electrode or you skip this is a terrible angle by the way i have no idea where i'm going yeah so that's not even that good of a spot um either two jeez Sometimes yeah, you, the game you get a, that if you mistime your double dashes, it just completely halts all movement. Yeah. Uh, outside here, we're going to get Kakuna or Metapod, whichever one uh, you go to. But if you don't get Electrode, you have to get both. And by doing that, you have to knock them out of the trees. Which does take a little bit of time. Oh, jeez. And these trees are not easy to hit. <laughs> They're not at all. <laughs> There's no like correct angle that goes straight into them. My practice runs did not pay off at all. <laughs> but yeah, on the other side of the house is Metapod's tree, but since we have Electro, we don't need that. This is also the only zone we don't trigger Drifwin because we never need to come back here. Right, and also Driftbloom is just like in the very, very far corner. Like it's not really that useful. Yep. For any scenario. We're gonna actually climb up the treehouse here and obtain a friend, another talking friend. 
Basically, we're in the end game now where every single friend just becomes a talking friend. There really are not that many friend requirements. There is a friend requirement in the end. Um, this angle is ridiculous. Yeah, uh, Mime, Mime Jr. Mime Jr. here just says uh, he's been studying us for a while and he, we can ask him about anything that we've done and he'll tell us. But, uh, no need. We don't care. An interesting thing about these treehouse friends is, I think I've talked about Burmy is in the treehouse. I mean, sometimes friend him. Um, Burmy, according to Pokemon Poke Park lore, is the only Pokemon in the entire universe that knows of existence of both the Poke Parks. Not a single other Pokemon are aware of the first and second existing at the same time. But Burmy does. Burmy is the god of Poke Park, controlling both of them. I have no idea why Burmy does know, though. <laughs> Burmy's just all knowing. Of course, sits on the tree all day. Dude's like a. <laughs> it's just a monk. Yeah, so this is Granite Zone. There's a lot of Pokemon here, and we're not going to talk to very many of them. We're not friending really any of them, actually. The only Pokemon we're friending is one, and the other, the rest of them are all just required yep. for the game. Yeah, there is, yeah, literally only one that we go out of the way to talk to, and it's not even that far out of the way. This here tests your timing. It's a complete straight shot. Almost bashed right into Charizard. <laughs> Another shaking one, Phantom's favorite attraction, because he somehow can't figure out how to hold the remote with two hands. <laughs> it, it's, I swear, it's easier one-handed. Absolutely. You say that, but you don't, you don't, you still struggle with it. Uh, I, I struggled more with it using two-handed method, so I adapted a one-handed method for shaking this minigame that I, I found I much easier. how you can. <laughs> Cause you gotta hit two in this one. Unlike the other ones where you were previously shaking, you gotta jump, gotta yeah. hop. So holding it two, holding it with two hands, like Brady has shown, and then just hopping. As easy as that. Now with one hand, I don't know how you'd shake the remote and also press and jump at the same time. Well, you see, my hand is as big as the entire Wii remote. So I use my ring finger to hit the two button as I'm gripping the Wii Remote. I don't understand it, man. <laughs> as, there's like, what, four Shaking Hurdle attractions. They're all pretty similar. We're down to our final two attractions, by the way. We got only two more. Yep. The next one is uh, kind of also a remix of an earlier attraction. And then the last one's just brand new. Brand new content. Here, there's a bridge that we have to hit a switch for. Nothing crazy, but we have to actually hit it again. Because we need to use it later on. Hopip just frenzy randomly, I don't know why. Mighty Hopip yeah. guarding the door. You did Absol's attraction. <laughs> Good enough for him. <laughs> With Ponytail, I didn't even do it. <laughs> Just understand that Charizard can't even advance. He hasn't cleared Hop uh, Absol's attraction. hop has been keeping them there for eons. hop probably has like 10 HP. Just <laughs> annihilates Charizard. Yeah, up here, we're going to talk to a very loud Pokemon. Um, he does like to scream. It's <laughs> like over the one button. He's like, I'm good. <laughs> Dude's guarding the gate. Not that you can't really go around it, but okay. Yeah. You do need to find the three secret words. Uh, wherever they may be. <laughs> My favorite Pokemon's also in this thing, but I have to. You have to friend Eevee before you can, the poor guy can even spawn. Sad days. Uh, is Eevee's in um, the beginning of Granite, right? Yeah. yeah. Usually Locked. chasing both. 
uh, chasing Linyun. For it. For it, Lop Bunny, and you are the three in there. So a consistent pattern with every battle is Thunderbolt Dash. It doesn't really change throughout the game. Um, you can use Iron Tail, but that's only if you buy the upgrade. And that doesn't really change the game anyway, because the damage output is still the same. So you're just going out of the way to get the upgrade when the damage is the same, so there's really no reason of doing it. Also, except for one Pokemon, most moves will target on where you were, so you can just jump to the side of each Pokemon and just be fine from there. Uh, the one I'm talking about is Torterra. That guy stinks. <laughs> hit, hit Here we have uh, some very difficult platforming of pressing the one and two buttons. Okay, let me do the cool thing. There we go. I remember back oh. in... Oh, skill move. I remember back in the day, fam, fam would not want to jump. He was like, I'm not, I'm not sprinting, no chance. It's like, none of that, no. <laughs> yeah, and, and then, I, then I did it, and I bopped, then I did it, and I bopped Glenn, so. Yes, I, <laughs> I'm woeful right now. Uh, this movement here is like really weird too. There's so many angles and so many tight corners that like you, you have to hit walls. Can't help it. All right. Do we get the best question? Is the important question. <laughs> Please give us the best question. Please. Just remember, who who are we asking right now? Here's it. Uh, no. Oh. Please. Man. There's still a chance. There's still a chance. No. So a question Porygon asks you is, what is his name? Now, it's the hardest question in the game. What is his name? I think it's Porygon 3. They will give you those answers. <laughs> and don't, that question can only, only be played in the first question. So it can't be... He, he will not say it again after the first question. Sadly. Also, oh, the no. hardest part of the game is coming up right now after this. Hardest platforming. Actually insane. <laughs> I've had to practice no it so much. I'm getting scrappy on the way back. Yeah. Um, it's faster on the way back. This is what I gotta write down. This is what I gotta write down, <laughs> to be honest. I've, I've been so out of touch. <laughs> The angle is too awkward getting it on the way. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I usually a 90 just degree don't. turn. <laughs> Electivire here. Uh, we just didn't hit him four times. Now, there was an old route where we actually got a Miller Dash upgrade alongside Double Dash. And it does one and a half damage when you hit him. And it saves a ton of time in battles. But again, it's a whole like cutscene when trying to get the upgrade. And the only where it saves time is in battles. The max yeah. dash upgrade is the same speed as double dash. So you might as well just time it instead of getting the upgrade. You it also used to have- A lot more berries. <laughs> yeah, you need a lot. Uh, we used to have to like break open like six or seven crates on the way. Just try and get as many as we can because we need like 70 extra berries with our route. And uh, we need like all the birds, which we, we still do stuff like that, and then we would get Max Dash by Granite Zone, so we would be using Granite Zone here. Oh, this is uh, Brady's favorite, to be honest. I was literally, uh, I was practicing this for like five minutes beforehand. To be honest, I never saw, I never saw Tokikis snipe you until that practice session. Yeah. What am I doing? This is the hardest platforming in the game. Because it re oh, reminds me of the shot it. Pikachu does control like a tank, so you are jumping and usually skipping platforms with very little actual control of Pikachu. Oh, this okay. part though, if it's slow, you can get it done, but if you fall, you lose 10 seconds. It's ridiculous. And all that just to get a secret word. <laughs> and a friend? Come on, don't you want to be Tokikis' friend? Not if it requires <laughs> that. <laughs> if you best friend them, uh, Tokikis will start using Air Slash and can just snipe you. Yep. And that becomes Brian. the hardest thing in the entire game. Like, it's impossible. I don't even know how you beat it. 
Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna be real friends with Togekiss, you have to get by his blades of air being shot at you while you're jumping. That's why I get on the way back. I just hold down left and I can just. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but now we need to go back and get the third secret word from someone that's not even in Grant's home. Yeah. Do you guys know which Pokemon we're talking about? I'll give you a hint. They're in Cavern. Hello? Who is oh, this? Oh, Yeah. Hello? Is it Torch? Is it Torch? Who knows? Imagine. Oh my... <laughs> <laughs> you have to find Torchic. Here we finally friend Mawel. We didn't even do anything, we just disappeared for an hour, came back. Now we're Mawel's friend. Mawel, oh, she's really, about really it. happy. Yeah, really happy there's a hot spring again. Even though, you know, it was her fault that it dried out. Uh, you know, not our issue. Oh, and also Snorlax. Found the no, shows in one. The movement on the way back here is actually really hard. Changed my mind. Oh, good lord. Brady, Change, please. He changed his mind again. I'm, I'm <laughs> not even a sprint. There we go. <laughs> but yeah, the three secret words. What were they again? He's love, love rainbow. rainbow, and... Peace. Is it peace? Yeah, I think it's peace. Yeah, pe peace, love, and rainbow. In that order. I remember in my world record, I actually accidentally bonked into Flygon. I was fuming. I was so angry. I lost eight seconds and I was out of my seat, swearing, throwing my Wii remote. <laughs> Just for eight now. Seconds. Now look at you. <laughs> Calm and composed. Getting ready for Salamence. Pokebark's already done its worst to you. So now you can just vibe. Oh yeah, I'm vibing though. So, are we gonna pull a cinder? A little bit of a comedic, I guess, kind of just a meme within the community is pulling a cinder. Basically, you have an 80 friend goal you need to get here if you don't reach 80. Oh, now you have to friend an extra Pokemon. It's kind of just a joke we have where if you don't reach 80, which happens a decent amount of times because there's so many Pokemon you have to get along the way that you just kind of mess up. I didn't mess up here, but you get 79. Most of the time you have to get Taylor. Or joke Unless you got Taylor and then you got to go and get Flygon because Arcanine uh, is a no. And then you got to look and then you look at Staraptor. Actually, no, Staraptor is the backup. But Staraptor is annoying because there's no ledge with water. Uh, also, all friends also accounts as the Volina Cinder. Uh, you can just forget a friend. Uh, usually it's Diglett because we just don't care for Diglett. We've already talked to them. Why should we have to find them? <laughs> a lot of times it's Doug Trio too as well. I don't know. Mainly the talking Here. friends stink. This is just a remix of Pelipper. A lot more fun though. You press the two button. Yep, it's not just motion controls. You do get to press a button this time. We can't avoid the bonus here at all. It doesn't really matter which Pokemon we get. Um, there's no point in going out of our way and getting a Pokemon that doesn't not get the bonus. I think if we use passwords and we use Pikachu, we could probably skip the bonus. Can we? Maybe. I've never used passwords. <laughs> I have used passwords. I have regretted it. Uh, back in the day, we used to uh, think that passwords were perfect because we needed them for the legendaries. Uh, you didn't. So most of the older runs uh, that have passwords, we realize, oh yeah, we can just save like four minutes not having to run with Pikachu. Because Pikachu uh, pa has three passwords uh, where you can do attractions. Pikachu can ride a surfboard, Pikachu can ride a uh, snowboard, and Pikachu can have balloons. So you can do basically all the attractions now, uh, which is cool. Uh, however, no, we don't want to do that no more. Uh, so we have like a, a new barrier route, stuff like that. And 
and now our all friends i believe has gone from it was like a 7 10 when we started doing it now it's like a, oh no it was a 6 52 it was like a 6 52 or 6 48 and now it's what's your current world record i think it's 6 35 or 37 something like that brady's good we all knew that uh now we're gonna be talking with blossom good old uh, we're in the flower zone. I bet you guys can't guess what's here. That's right, flowers. Wow, you guys are really good at this. And Lucario. And Lucario. <laughs> so Lucario is Chase, even though we don't do it here, it's in all friends. Um, he does like a full 360 and hits you while you're trying to chase him. So while you're trying to steal his lunch money, he says, no, I'm gonna take yours. Hits you and runs away. Yeah, he, he does like to just aura sphere randomly. So the whole reason we're here is we're trying to find a mirror to call down Rayquaza. Because Rayquaza is the guardian of the flower zone. The mirror fell down though from the flower zone and into the treehouse. So we have to go up to the tippy top of the treehouse to reach the mirror and the treehouse is infamous because there's no such thing as good treehouse movement at all <laughs> like that <laughs> good start oh good lord good start <laughs> all this while timing double dash too yeah you can you just kind of mash <laughs> you might make it to the top without too much effort Good before the, good getting into the treehouse. Good at like stuff like that. Once you got into the treehouse, good. Everything else, we don't want to talk about it. But um, good lord, it's impossible getting in. Oh. <laughs> thankfully, we don't have to walk through all of Granite Zone holding the mirror. Um, you can True. also you cannot item slide here as well. Um, you, it's like the string where you just kind of slide inside the mirror. But also you can clip the mirror into the wall too. So against the left side there where there's a wall where you can look like you can slide it. You can't. The mirror actually just clips inside because it's not really a hitbox and you can't pick it up anymore. So you would not recommend. Soft lock percent? <laughs> I think if you uh, save and quit, it respawns it. But that's the only way you get it back. So we're gonna reflect the light right back into Rayquaza's eyes, and he's gonna come down. <laughs> Again, the goal is to get to the Sky Pavilion, because that thing is basically doing what, if you ever played Sonic and Knuckles 3, with uh, Angel Island falling down to the Earth, uh, that's what we're doing. We need to... This is basically just a Sonic and Knuckles ripoff. Uh, we're trying to stop the Sky Pavilion from crashing into the Earth. Uh, and in doing so, we need to restore the prism, the Sky Prism, which is what we get with the shards. Uh, we basically got all of them now that we're going to beat Rayquaza up. So what we will be doing is now trying to find the Sky Pavilion. This is a completely original attraction too. There's really no inspiration at all. Like this is a full brand new speaking attraction to look cool too. It's still mostly too. an auto scroller. Yeah. <laughs> this one's also like really long for all friends too, but entertaining. Too. And there's these little electrodes and voltorbs in the way that actually do we if you hit them, um, you lose points. And since Pikachu's really light, you can actually get pushed off. If you push off, you fall off, you lose like five seconds. Kind of like a lack of two situation kind of happens, you get flown in. And now it's time for the thing. Yeah, this is where you get your points. Uh, the way. Exactly. The way you actually. Uh, get an advantage with other Pokemon is that the cursor just becomes bigger. So for beginners, you kind of use Absol. For Brady, you use Pikachu. Yeah, you only need 30,000 points. Not a lot to ask for. I lost a world record to this, by the way. <laughs> so, I was on... Crazy pace. I think it was 117.40 pace. Crazy.
crazy. Um, one seventeen. Wow, my, you're an hour. <laughs> wow. Oh, not not one seven. Two seven. My bad. <laughs> Man was going crazy. <laughs> um, my cursor broke. So I completely lost the run. And by the way, I was already. This is the very end of the game. This is two and a half hours in, pretty much. I was so angry. I was speechless. I was. I didn't say a word for the rest of the night. I just went to bed. And now that we've done all of the attractions, Shaman will gladly transform for us <laughs> after we water its flower. <laughs> Talk to Blossom. Blossom gives us the uh, water bucket to water the flower. I don't know why this flower is so important. Because there's so many around here. <laughs> it is the only one. Oh, look at that technique. <laughs> there we go. Now, Shaman's gonna transform and then tell us that we are too big to be carried to Sky Pavilion, <laughs> and we need to find our own way up there. A funny thing about Blossom, too, is, like the circles Galen explained, Blossom can kind of spawn around the flowers. There's also It's almost like an oval, too, because there's a little far corner away from the patches that Blossom can spawn in. And you kind of have to look for Blossom first, too. I got really lucky with the spawn, but you have to find Blossom. Blo you can't find Blossom if Blossom's in the corner. Blossom's just behind the pillar, so it kind of screws you up a little bit. Only Take a shot happen. every time this man says Blossom. <laughs> you would have died in the last sentence. Also, I, I could I say, uh, love how Shaman walks. Uh, if you watch that cutscene again, put it on loop. Look at that man move. Oh, he just glides. Welcome to the Sky Pavilion. Uh, we are entering Endgame. We have to friend one more Pokemon, and this guy's an annoying, annoying Pokemon of friends. Isn't this inspiration for the uh, water part in in uh, Battle Revolution too? This is just Battle Revolution, right? Yeah, I don't know which one came first though. So I'll be honest. <laughs> I wonder. I can just look. Battle Revolution came out in 2006, December 14th. I think, uh, this, that, came I think this came after. Yeah. Yeah, 2006. 2009 is when Pokemon 4 came out, so yeah. we, we, we ripped it off. Man. Really hard yes. movement here. It's impossible to avoid the pillars. You just kind of bash your face into the wall. Nothing can really do about it. Yeah, so Shaman basically said, uh, Mew could be anywhere. One time he disguised himself as a haunter to scare people because he thought it'd be funny. Where am I going? Oh, oh wait, this is right. Wait, this man was losing his direction. We're just checking in on Piplup. Oh wait, Piplup was back there, wasn't he? Yeah, Piplup's pretty fast. So, makes sense. One of them is an imposter. I wonder who it is. I think it's the one at the blimp. Right. I think you should ask again. Piplup is crazy fast, though. I mean, got the iceberg, like, snap. Just like that. I, w I would believe it. It found the answer. In no time. That's why we're speedrunners. Mew. Don't be silly. Now, we get to do one more obstacle hop. <laughs> we get to do one this more of everything. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a fan of this obstacle hop, huh? as any of them. Because with Togekiss, I practice enough where there's just I kind of have the movement stuck in my head. With this, the platforms are so big and they get smaller and smaller each time. So you don't really have like a set movement ingrained in your head. You just kind of have to go with the flow. The depth perception here is also a little awkward, but. Uh, get some good dash jumps between each one. You can dash at the end, skip right over the platform. 
easy. And now, uh, you get to fight three Pokemon you've definitely seen before, right? Not in any percent. <laughs> <laughs> Magmort is a pretty cool fight, though. He shoots, like, a lot of fire at you. If you let him attack. Right. And you, you know he can just jump aside, though. This is also where Max Stash upgrade would have came in handy, because you fight three pretty tanky Pokemon, and you yep. just do so much damage. Right here, we have to use T-Bolt combos. On this one, we can't. Right. Because, would you look at that? Garchomp. And he told you Thunderbolt doesn't work on him. Yep. <laughs> mew, mew, mew. That's all I hear. I wake up fearing. Yeah, so Mew goes from one Pokemon that is invulnerable to Thunderbolt to another Pokemon that is not invulnerable to Thunderbolt. <laughs> are there any beefy Pokemon in this game that are involved in vulnerable besides Karchomp? Mamoswine. Oh, right. Mamoswine is a hard fight. In this, this would be hard. On this, these pla this platform? Yeah. Because sure. he, like, chases after you for, like, 10 seconds. Rotero? Oh, good lord. We love Rotero around these parts. <laughs> and... Nice. So you're going to 21. Honestly, not that bad. Actually, this could be a... Actually, yeah. This could be a low 220. Or a high 220. I don't know why, yeah. All right, uh, this is the last part. We just chased Mew. All skill games back to back. Even hide and seek. <laughs> All right, time's gonna start uh, stop relatively soon. We're gonna have to go through a couple of text boxes. Pretty late, though, but get ready. We're gonna talk, and then we're gonna get teleported. We're gonna talk a couple more when the black screen happens. Uh, that's when the time to stop. Not there. Here. Right. Not here. This okay, oh. it's about to come up right now. When it turns to black, and time. I get. Two twenty one fifteen was when you got it. Yep. GGS. GGS. Thank you everyone for watching. It was a blast. Thank you guys for commentating along beside me. Appreciate of course. It. Of course, Fed needs to go to bed. The poor man's been up. It's it's what? Like six o'clock for you? It's almost seven. Poor man. <laughs> Shout out to West Coast. You you've done real well today. No, it's a pleasure commentating. Uh mm -hmm. also, fun news, Poker Park's gonna be having a lot more showcase. Brady's, Brady showed it here. We're gonna have a in person coming up, uh, and yeah, I mean, we need more Poke Park representation. We got like That's five a... seconds. We got like five seconds in the the present for twenty fifth year. Um, Poke Park is like one of the most random Pokemon games too, which is really surprising. It makes sense because you need like a three DS capture card to capture other games. But if you compare the leaderboards, Poke Park is like top five it's kind of crazy but really no one's ever heard of the speedrun which is why i'm so happy i speed ran it today because i want to show everyone's favorite childhood game in front of everyone so thank you it was a pleasure all right <laughs>